Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at sketch visibility and sketch dimension visibility in Fusion 360. If you want to follow along, go to the description of the video and you can download the dataset, shell, chair, and follow along on your own. What we're going to be talking about is the way in which we can display and modify sketches and sketch dimensions without having to edit them. So to get started, there are a couple of things that we should always keep in mind. When we take a look at this design, there are a lot of solid bodies and there are a lot of sketches. Most of the sketches are fully defined as identified by the lock icon. However, there is one sketch that is underdefined, which has that small pencil icon. This lets me know which sketches I can easily manipulate without having to modify dimensions. Another aspect you should always consider is going to be the complexity of the model as well as the location of the sketches and features you're trying to manipulate. For this example, we're going to get started first by modifying the seat pad trim. We're going to show the sketch, then we're going to right click on it and select show dimensions. This seat pad sketch happens fairly near the end of our timeline, which means that it's going to update a trim, a thicken, a chamfer, and a fillet. So very few features are dependent upon this sketch. So for example, if we change this eight inch dimension by double clicking it down to six inches, the update happens relatively quickly. If I instead make it 10 inches, make it a bit wider, once again, the update happens relatively quickly because of its location in the timeline and the other features that need to be rebuilt. However, if we take a look at the seat back, now the seat back is a sketch that's just before this. However, if we identify its location in the timeline, there is an extrude that happens after it, as well as several other surface features, chamfers and fillets, followed by trims and so on. So this means that this is a little bit more complex and it's gonna take a bit longer to update. So for example, if I wanted to change the profile of this, because I'm using a control or a box type spline, I can manipulate these vertices by manually pulling them in. However, this means that not only does the sketch need to be rebuilt, but also any additional features downstream even if they aren't affected by this design. So you can see that updated relatively quickly, but not nearly as fast as the seat pad. Now, if we happen to go all the way back to the base of this chair or a little bit earlier in the timeline, then we start to have to rebuild everything as we go. So for example, this front profile, we're gonna right click and show dimensions. And now we can take a look at the overall width We've got this center line dimension here, which factors into another feature, in this case, the front leg. And then we also have this radius value, which controls the radius of this piece of wood. But downstream, there's a trim or an intersect feature. It also affects the seat pad and all of those other pieces of the puzzle that happen after this point. So if we were to change this from a 15 inch radius to a 17 inch radius, it has to rebuild the sketch, it has to rebuild the feature, and then it also has to rebuild everything else after it. So it's going to compute everything from that point in your timeline all the way to the end of your features. Now one way we can speed this process up is if we find that sketch in our timeline and we drag the timeline marker all the way down to that sketch and we simply go just past it for those features, this means that the update is going to happen quite a bit quicker. So 15, if we go up to 20, these changes happen relatively quickly because all of those downstream features don't need to be rebuilt at the same time. So if you happen to be manipulating a fairly complex design, it's a good idea to go back in the timeline, figure out where that feature is, and then rebuild it to your liking without having to wait for the entire design to rebuild. And then you can manually go past several of these features and just validate them one at a time or in small groups at a time. There are a couple of other tips that I do want to mention in this video. The first of which is going to be under modify and change parameters. If you use user parameters in your design, they'll be displayed in the user parameter section. And they're a great way for you to control overall dimensions of your design. For a case like this, things like the radius of that seat. But if you don't use user parameters, you can always expand your model parameters and find things like dimensions and features or dimensions and sketches. These can be used to update and modify your designs in real time as well. And it's a great way for you to organize and update your designs from a single point location. Another thing that I do wanna mention is the use of some other visibility settings. So for example, with the seat back, we were looking at a spline. We're gonna take a look at this sketch. And then with the spline selected, so simply manually select the spline, right click, 
Now we can toggle on curvature visibility. This is an extremely handy thing that we can do without having to go back in and edit the sketch. And even if you left curvature visibility on in your sketch, you can toggle it back off here. This is great because now as we manipulate our splines, we can get a real-time update on how that's going to affect the overall curvature comb, which downstream is going to affect things like manufacturability. There are a couple of other right-click options that you can find, things like showing and hiding projected geometries and construction geometries. When we're dealing with control point splines like this, hiding the construction geometry means we can no longer easily edit that. So for some cases, hiding and showing these different types of geometries can be helpful, but in some cases you may need to leave them on so that they are easy to update. That's as far as we're gonna take this example. I suggest that you continue to play around with this, see how you can manipulate and modify it, and of course, figure out where the breaking point's gonna be so you understand where these features can be updated. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.